what is a world? And what is the idea of the LARP? That's what I'm going to talk about. In the two previous faders, we talked about the scenography, which might be the building of a world, literally, and a loyalty to a world, which could be translated into being loyal to the idea. Then that's different things. Well, when you do a game, you have to figure out what's the point. Why am I doing this? And to some games and some of you, this fader will be completely irrelevant because you will not have a theme as such. Maybe your game is about tourism or something completely else. But maybe you have a theme, be it imprisonment, the Burgundian army of 1470, or be it World War II, Maybe in a broad sense, gender and gender equality. What's the point? Anyway, what is it you want to get across? And why do you want to make a game in that theme? So maybe you want to have a noticeable representation. And what we mean with representation is that some idea that you have actually gets to be represented in the game as such. And of course you can have several themes uh, and you probably will regardless of what you think. So keep it simple again and try to remain conscious of what is important because you might have 10 or 20 different interests pulling at you when you do something. What you see isn't always what you get. It's very rarely what you get. If I would take a picture of you guys from up here, it would be almost impossible to, from that picture, assess what kind of conference or what kind of meeting this is. Because what's going on isn't what's actually going on with you sitting in those chairs. Actually, if I took a picture of this, it could be in almost any country there would be nothing that says that this is Lithuania there would be nothing saying that I, the person on stage would be speaking English and there's definitely not enough markers so that I could figure out that it's a LARP school or that it's summer for that matter even if we saw the outsides <laughs> So the same thing can be many things. And this is um, actually from a pre-game workshop with Between Heaven and Sea. And he is very ashamed. Um, his parents are really, really not happy about his uh, choice of spouse. And I was going to say Auris' choice of spouse, because that's what it is. It's not important that it's a guy. Um, and this scenography here is really abstract. Scenography was the thing Jok was talking about. Um, this is supposed to be their, the family's main room. And it's not very loyal to the game scenography because share doesn't even exist. But the feeling, and in this case the feeling of an honor culture, where it's really, really important who this person shows as a spouse, it is there. And it is, and this is the sort of requirement for it to be an enactment. It is simulated as accurately as possible. So his feeling in this scene is simulated as accurately as possible. The player really, really feels the look upon him by the parents. That's not just a simulation of where they say, yes, imagine that we are looking disprovingly at you. On the contrary, it, does, it really feels. So if my theme would be to build a 
space setting and I want to explore a space setting, then this would not be a simulation or a enactment. It would be very, very abstract and allegorical. But because my theme wasn't that, and especially not in the workshops, it is an enactment of that feeling. And this is where this fader gets a little bit complicated because we really need to keep track of what is what and the same thing can be many things and I'll try to make it a little bit more clear because what you need to remember that the outer trappings the symbol of the culture is not necessarily the things that happens and it might also diffuse my team. Like when you said that if we build this really, really cool world, players will want to explore it. And maybe my theme wasn't about exploring that. So maybe that will actually make it more difficult. Battlestar Galactica is a TV series uh, with a rather detailed universe in some ways. And this theme is represented in the game by working heavily on the faders of scenography and loyalty to the world. The theme, Battlestar Galactica, as a theme, uh, isn't the only theme, and because it's this wasn't a well, it wasn't supposed to be just a cosplay game where you play in these costumes. Uh, I'm not actually sure how important that theme was as an expressed theme to the organizers. And that's another thing with this fader, that you really can't analyze a game from the outside to judge this fader. It's all in the organizers' heads. So nobody can come up to you later and say, I don't think you did a good job of this theme you had. Because you can say, oh, okay, you maybe the theme for you in this game was so-and-so, but my theme was this. So some of the other faders you can actually backtrack and you can look at a game from after it's done and you can try to figure out what the faders were. In this one you can't, because only the organizers can actually tell you what their idea and their theme was. And one of the one of the positions is what's called simulation or enactment. And that's where we try to act out what is really there. Think of reenactment, like medieval reenactment, where you sort of you you pretend that you're in the Middle Ages. You don't necessarily have characters, but you really try to act it out as clearly as possible. And it's going through the motions in a way would be the most common way to do enactment. However, when you do enactment of a theme, it can be in other ways. Like I said, with Between Heaven and Sea, the theme of amorous pleasure, of really, really feeling what it feels to do amorous pleasure, has very little to do with going through the motion of vaginal intercourse. Most players, if they actually had vaginal intercourse in a game, would probably not feel very attracted and stimulated and in love and horny. It would probably be awful. <laughs> and that's a case where the enactment of the motions wouldn't produce the theme. On the other end of the, of the slider, we have what I choose to call allegory or an abstraction. An allegory is what um, some very famous guys keep doing in texts like Jesus or Muhammad. They do allegories. They talk about one thing, but they mean another thing. They give you an example of something like uh, there's a son that goes away and he uses all his inheritance and he comes back and he thinks that everybody's just going to throw him out but actually his father shows him a lot of love and forgives him. That's an allegory in the Bible 
about the forgivingness of God. And a lot of games actually work like that. We do one thing, we play about one thing, but the theme is actually another. And I would say that Halat Hisar was such an allegory. We want to discuss the occupation of Palestine, but we do an occupation of Finland. Now this is a very clear-cut allegory. It's easy to sort of translate. But there's some things that wouldn't be the same. Also, in between heaven and sea, the gender division of male and female was a theme that we wanted to discuss, but we couldn't just do male and female because that comes with so many other ideas and, and luggage that the players will bring in. So we made completely new genders. And those genders are in a lot of ways allegorical. So the fader max of enactment. Trying to push your game into this direction has some very obvious pros. It's easier to find co common reference material. Even if I set my game in the 1470s, which is a long time ago, it's not impossible to find sources, actual sources, and we have remnants of clothes and so on. And we can, through uh, history and history lessons, gain a common understanding of that. Even if I, if I do this together with people in Switzerland, they will sort of have read the same books, which is also an idea we have. But And we can do exploration of settings and situations. I want to explore how it would be uh, in a prison. It doesn't matter if I set it up scenography-wise as a prisoner for a day or couple. Both of those give me a possibility to explore thematic things. So this is where this fader is actually not redundant, like it's not unnecessary because of the other faders, because this is like more intention-wise. Uh, the problem is that of course not everybody have the same frame of reference, and if it's a delicate topic, it might actually trigger very unwanted reactions. Like, I would say that a game which I feel very dubious against is the game Fat Man Down, which is about bullying and where the person who is biggest get to play the fat man and then the other players bully that person. And of course this is an enactment, but it can trigger things that this person has actually gone through in their life. And that's sort of the point in this, in this game. But maybe it's not worth it for the theme. And of course, remember that this tells you absolutely nothing about the scenography. It can all be cut out houses and paper guns and whatnot, and still be an enactment of the theme. So on the other hand, we have allegory. And it's very easy then to, re well, easier to retain control of all the unwanted elements, because we don't have to go into the, uh, whether or not uh, the Israeli are acting because they do because of the Holocaust and, and so on. We don't have to go into that theme when we set the occupation in, in Finland. Do you understand? So we can sort of clear out some of the things that might be important for the actual situation or at least be common threads in the discussion about the actual situation, but we can just talk about the situation we want to talk about. And also, uh, it's a lot easier to keep simple and isolate the theme. However, a lot can be lost in translation. And I took the example of some religious texts, just not as an accident, but I would say that one of the biggest problems with some of the religious texts is that it leaves a lot up for interpreta interpretation. And there's a lot about those contexts we don't know. 
and anything that you can you can extrapolate such a wide array of actions from is not going to be very accurate when it comes to what you want to portray. And it might also have a domino effect on other themes. Like if somebody starts misinterpreting one thing, then that might actually destroy the other things that you had decided. And also remember that just because you can't physically see it doesn't mean that it's allegorical. The word abstract doesn't mean abstract as in a figment of your imagination or that it's abstract in that sense. It can be totally something you see and still be an allegory. And the same way it can be something you can't see, like a culture or genders or something like that and not be an allegory. So I would say that most games would go somewhere in the middle, like with all our faders. Uh, they will represent structures from the outside, because sometimes that feels easiest, like Jock said, with the scenography. And it will try to represent the world by indexical, which means this is a way of saying it's the same thing, kind of, and even numerical, identical. If there is a spoon, it is actually this spoon. If there is a remote control, it is this remote control. And the same thing is, if there is this room, it is actually this room. The theme is being in a conference room, it's not being necessarily in a spaceship. And to make a theme playable, and to the point where you want to say something, it's, it's often easier to use some kind of allegory and, and more abstract methods to represent it. And also because the more translation, and I mean translation between the allegorical and the actual thing you want people to focus on, the more translation needed to get it across, the more allegorically the theme is represented. So, to sum up. As always, when you do something, you have to make conscious choices. Maybe you both want to discuss how some people living in Israel might be using the traumas of themselves and their fathers and mothers in the Holocaust and how they are sort of recreating this like some idea of abused children growing up and then abusing their own children. Maybe that's a theme you want to discuss. And yes, I'm being slightly political here. Uh, but you also want to discuss the effects on occupation and you want to represent what this does in a small village losing their olive trees. And maybe you can put all of this together as themes in one game, but the more specific and emotional themes you choose, the more difficult it's going to get. And the bigger the risk that you're just going to blur it all together and actually not say anything. So decide what, if any, because a lot of games don't have any points they want to get across at all. And you don't need to have any points you want to get across. Maybe it's just actually fun cooking by a campfire in 1472 in the Burgundian army. And there's no point. So choose which points you want to get across and prepare for that before the game. Design for that through workshop structures, actual gameplay and debrief, just like you've been taught here. And choose what aspect of a conflict or a thing you want to represent. Because just because you want to represent Battlestar Galactica, I mean, that's a huge concept. 
choose which one. So maybe Battlestar Galactica theme was represented through the small, albeit present theme of racism that is present in some of the fiction. It could have also been about piloting. And then design to make it happen. Because if you don't decide and design, then it will be decided in a passive voice by players. And they can, players, they can just make up almost anything. And they will, anyway. So the more control you retain over such a design process, the easier it is to actually get a theme represented. Thank you.